We want to welcome you today to our Tuesday in the season of Pentecost, the very first Tuesday. This, of course, is the longest season of the church year. It begins with the gift of the Holy Spirit and the celebration of that, and we're going to take a look at that today, but let us begin with some prayer. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for blessing us with life and giving us these opportunities. God, today, right now, at this very moment, there is turmoil and strife in our country. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fall upon us and upon your people. We pray for your peace to rule and to reign. And we just ask your continued protection and you ask you to help us to look forward to the future, that you would transform us as your people, that we might be more a reflection of your love. For you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, today, Tuesday, is a chaotic day as we look around in our country and the violence that's taking place there. And I know that so many of you are just embroiled or overwhelmed with grief over once again being demonstrated to us the, the power of our racism. When I say our racism, we all are uh, struggling, I think, with our own limitations, our own bigotries against other people, the own prejudgments that we make. You know, it does remind me of years ago, I was driving with somebody I cared for very much, actually. We're driving through Braddock, and it was funny because we're trying to come home to my, my place, and the windows were open, and the door was unlocked, and as soon as we drove into Braddock, for those who are watching who don't understand what Braddock, Braddock was primarily, and is to this day, primarily an African-American community, and uh, all of a sudden, she locked the door, raised up her window, and if you were to ask this person, well, are you... Are you bigoted against black people? No, I've got a black friend. You know, don't we all do that sometimes? I've got a black friend, therefore I'm not a bigot. The problem is, is that we do respond to people differently because of the color of their skin. Uh, on my track team, you can see I'm wearing a track shirt today from Trinity Christian. I can tell you for a fact that my 15-year-old boys that are black are treated much differently than my 15-year-old boys that are white on the track team. A 15-year-old boy who is white is still treated, oh, he's just a kid, he makes a mistake, oh, well, 15-year-old boy who is black, well, he should know better. I can tell you for a fact, they are treated as though they're much older because they're black, because they appear to be more of a threat. And so these are the types of things that the Spirit of God needs to move within us to excise this type of bigotry from our lives. I want to take a look at the Spirit in our lives. For the day of Pentecost is a celebration that we believe that we can be touched and transformed, and we need to be touched and transformed. And so let us take a look at Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they, the disciples, were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared with them as tongues of fire resting on each one of them. A couple of themes as we look at this, when we hear about the big, mighty wind. And what is the wind? Well, we think of that as the Spirit itself, that God was in some way moving, okay? This is very particular. I want you to pay attention to this. In the Old Testament, when was the Spirit moving? Oh, pull this up. Let's take a look. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. The wind of God, the Spirit of God, the Ruach. That is the wind of God that moved upon the, the waters. Something brand new and exciting was about to take place. Oh, there's another time that the Spirit of God moved. So again, Genesis 1. Birth of Jesus. God is doing something brand new. Every time the Spirit moves, it is an indication that God is doing something new. Now God is doing something brand new here. Moving upon the disciples. In fact, we go on and we find out about these tongues of fire. Okay? Um, do you remember when John the Baptist 
told about the one who is coming. He said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with what? Oh, this isn't going to be very good. I'm sorry. I wish. There we go. A little bit better there. He's going to baptize you with fire. Now, fire, yes, it destroys, but in this case, this is a, a, a symbol, or I should say, an assertion that the Spirit is transforming our lives, purifying us. You see, fire brings purification. Um, we may not, because we don't work oftentimes with metals and with those types of things that you have to take. And, you know, when you're working with metal, you maybe pour something in a form if you're making a sword. And then you bang out all the impurities and you stick it in the water and then you put it in the fire again. All of this is a purification process in the way they thought several thousand years ago. of Getting rid of or getting out all of the impurities out of that metal. You're not destroying the metal. You're making it stronger by getting rid of the impurities. So when we talk about the fire of the Holy Spirit, it's banging out all of those impurities out of our lives, heating us up, then dipping us into the water, and all of those impurities just keep banging them out, banging them out. This is what God is trying to do in our lives. It's not, the fire is not judgment. It's just we can make you better. See, this is what God wants to do with us. God moved over the face of the earth. In Genesis 1, the world was chaos. The Spirit of God brought order out of chaos in Genesis. The Spirit of God brought Jesus Christ. Hope for the world. The Spirit of God is now working in our lives to drive out those impurities, to make us stronger, to make us more effective tools that God can use to bless the world. So I want to loop back to what I started with. Oh, the chaos that exists right now in the United States of America. It is with great sadness that once again we are found wanting in terms of our racial attitudes. I know it was a bad police officer, right? It's you and me. We are a part of the problem. I told a story on my Facebook page. True. Back 30 years ago, I lived in Minnesota, right on the border between St. Paul and Minneapolis, right, at, right very close to where this George Floyd was killed. I went to a store because uh, to buy something. And I, I, I handed him a $20 bill. Cashier held it up to the light as they do. Maybe you've done that. Held it up to the light and said, sir, this is counterfeit. Now you have to understand, I was pretty poor at that time. That $20 bill was everything I had. Now I can tell you that the cashier did not assume that I was somehow counterfeiting money. The manager did not assume that I was somehow trying to get away with something. They assumed rightly that that $20 bill was probably handed to me when I got change somewhere else. I probably handed somebody uh, a $50 bill or something of that nature and I got $20 in change. And that one of the $20 bills that I got in change was counterfeit. The police weren't called on me. Nobody pulled a gun on me. And I'm still living. We have a black man who had a family that loved him very much, who pulled out a counterfeit bill, probably didn't even know. He was desperate. That might be all he had. He maybe he hasn't been working. Sounds like, like many people during this season, he was struggling to make ends meet. And so he took this $20 bill that he might have gotten from this business down the street, pawned it off on him, a $20 bill that was fake. He didn't create this thing. He didn't know it was counterfeit. He handed it, oh, all of a sudden the police are being called. And next thing you know, a police officer's putting his knee on his neck and he's dead. That wouldn't have happened to me. It didn't happen to me. And yes, it is because I'm white and he's black. That is, by definition, what it means, a privilege of being white. I don't have to worry about the fact if I accidentally pass a $20 counterfeit bill, that because I'm white, I'm suddenly going to be dead. 
but these things happen more often than they ought to with our black citizens of this country. People we love very much, our next door neighbor, people who are brothers and sisters in Christ. Because you know, here's the crazy thing about it. The difference between me and a black person is, I've lost the melanin in my skin. I'm the oddball, by the way. But that's the only difference. There's only one race, and I don't mean that in a dismissive or, oh, is, we're just one human race. I mean this biologically. There's only one human race. We're not two different species, black and white. God created us all together to be one. We have some impurities in us that we just kind of dismiss the destruction that's taking place, or I should say the oppression of one group of people uh, at the, or, uh, I should say, the favoring one group of people at the expense of another. It happens every day. We are a part of it. The Spirit needs to come and knock this stuff out of us. Purify us. And so I'm praying for the Spirit of God to move this season in our lives in our hearts, to purify us so that we can stand together as brothers and sisters. Don't come up to me and say, well, I'm not a bigot. I, I have a black friend. I don't care. Yeah, you probably are. You probably accept a lot of the institutional things that are done in your name. Oh, I'm going to share an example. About, what, 15 years ago, there was another black man. New York City. He was killed by police officers. Again, I'm going to tell you why. Because he was trying to sell some cigarettes that he had rolled up and made on the street. He was trying to sell them for a buck or two, trying to put food on the, fam uh, on the table for his family. It was kind of his entrepreneurial effort to feed his family. He would go and buy tobacco. He would go buy the rolls, I, I don't know, whatever they're called, the paper. And he'd roll up his cigarettes and he'd sell them for a buck or two. He'd make a little bit of profit. He'd put some food on the table for his family. Seems relatively harmless. Oh, except for the fact that the mayor and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, the council of New York City decided that they wanted all the taxes they could get and all the profit they could get from everybody. This was untaxed money. And so they pass a law, well, we want this tax money. So you're not allowed to go and do that. You can't sell these cigarettes. Now all of a sudden they said, let's enforce this law. Well, who does this uh, unproportionately affect? I don't think anybody sat there and said, well, this is going to affect black people uh, at a greater level than it does white people. But the truth is, it affected black people more than it did whites. There are a lot of reasons for that because of institutional racism that goes back years and years and years and years in this country that we haven't addressed, that we don't want to address because I'm not a bigot, I've got a black friend. That's why we don't address these bigger issues. So this man was selling a cigarette butt because the council uh, of New York City wanted their money. This law was enforced disproportionately against black folks as opposed to white people. Because white people, after all, they own the companies that sell cigarettes legally. And now he's dead. Because he was trying to make an extra buck or two for his family. Don't see a problem with that? Intentionally or not, we often pass laws, regulations, do other things, that disproportionately affect negatively our brothers and sisters who are black. Not intentional, not always, but it still affects them negatively. And so what we need to do is we need to have the Spirit of God come into our hearts and pound out these impurities, the ignorance and also the intentional. Those things that we do we know we're doing to harm, harm people, and those things that maybe we just don't think of. The good news is, is that we believe in the Spirit, and we believe that the Spirit can purify us and make us stronger and better, and we can overcome this season.
and truly, truly treat our brothers and sisters with peace and with justice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is certainly not where I was expected to go today with this Bible study, and it is quite okay if people respond negatively to what I just said. I get it. None of us wants to believe that we're part of the problem. I am part of the problem. And so I pray for your spirit to come upon me today and knock out those impurities in my heart so that I may be a stronger witness to the love of Jesus Christ. We just pray that you continue to draw us together. We pray for a country caught in conflict and turmoil. We pray for your healing and peace. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.